impressive. There's just like love overflowing. Wow, you guys are good this morning. <laughs> this is fat. Look what you created. <laughs> love just gets this going. Reverend Michael said to tell you all a good morning. He always says, did you tell them I said good morning? And I go, oh gosh. So I'm not forgetting. It's the first thing I said. So if he asks, can you really say good morning for me? Please, I'll let you know that I did. I want to read to you something this morning. Um, interestingly enough, and no coincidences, that you're reading from The Course in Miracles this morning. Weren't you go there, you are. And Mary Ann Williamson says, we're brought together by an intentional universe for one reason only, the enlightenment of all concerned. Whether our connection is through work or family, a casual encounter or a lifelong involvement, the purpose of every relationship is the healing of the world. Mm -hmm. yes. The purpose of every relationship is the healing of the world. So in this room, the purpose of every relationship here is the healing of the world. Do you know that you all come together on Sunday mornings? Thank you so much for the healing of the world. You come together in life with every wake up for the healing of the world. Every relationship, even the challenging ones, especially the challenging ones, is for the purpose to heal the world, for us to wake up. See, we have this opportunity to shift our perception of what the world is telling us, and when I say that, I'm talking about societal beliefs, versus what the spiritual truth is. And the spiritual truth is, each and every one of you come here on Sunday mornings or wherever you go to be in the presence of one another so that you will know the truth for yourselves and the person sitting next to you and front and behind you. You are here to remember for each other that you are spiritual beings that are absolutely light and pure love that are blessing the planet just by you showing up. That's all you had to do is show up. All you had to do is take a body, show up, and that was enough because you came in with everything you needed to deliver your gifts. You said yes and you got here. Now everyone next to you gets to look at you and remember for you when you forget when you forget, because we do forget. These last few weeks since I've seen you, it seems like it's been a short time, and still so much has happened. I was driving here, and some of you know I live quite a ways away, so I have lots of time to drive and think. And, and I was realizing so much has occurred in the last few weeks. There was a beautiful wedding that I was so grateful for. And at the same time, the very next day, there was a memorial service I was at. And the very next day, I'm visiting a friend who was on the verge of leaving her body. And then the next day I was with another one who was in, in dealing with some big trauma in life. And then I flew across the United States to take my little godson to college. Perception, perception, perception. Like where was life at? It was in the fullness of love through every single detail. He said, I just don't understand this to do with college. Somebody help me understand this. <laughs> My perception is when you take your child or godson to college, like I was almost climbing out the window as the car, car got off the freeway, you know, and there's people with signs, welcome, my hands out, they're like, he's here, oh my gosh, he's here, he's in the back seat. And I know the six foot three kids start to shrink down. And I went, what's wrong? I'm so happy, we're here. I flew across the United States to take you to school. He was like, I know, but you don't have to tell the entire universe. <laughs> okay, I'll try to simmer down. Perception. My perception was, and his is too, he will tell you, he just does it in a different way than I do, that there was just pure joy to welcome him into this next chapter of his life. Each and every one of us has the opportunity to shift our perception in the midst of life with every breath we take. See, there's this perception to do with labor and love. Labor, when I look it up, is all about hard work. Who else was raised in here that you work hard in life? Who else besides me? Bless my parents. Because it's a good, it's like their aim was good. I have great work ethic. And there's a knowing that, wait a minute, if we're simply working to work hard, we're buying into a societal belief system that forgets to let love lead the way at times. How many of you go into work every day knowing, no, I'm, lo I'm leading by love every moment and I'm knowing that everything is so good in my business? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to ask you that next week or whenever I've got one of my hands to up. Because if love is leading the way, the possibility of a shift of perception is whether it's called labor or love, it's the same. It's the same.
same. We get to show up and bring more love to every single situation. You don't just show up on Sundays to say, I'm going to know the truth for you and I'm going to know the truth for you. You get to go into that place called work and bring so much love that you transform the environment you're in just by your sheer presence. By your sheer presence. We have the opportunity to remember that we can shift our adjustment. We get to shift our perception at any given moment of how we are viewing things. When you look at that space called, what is it that I am giving all my work to? My invitation to you is to look at it from the set mindset of, do I need to have an adjustment on my mind today? I go see my chiropractor regularly for the purpose of one thing, so she could keep adjusting me because I'm extremely physical. And I like her to just put me back into shape when I need it. How often do we do that to our own inner chatter? How often do we adjust our own chatter and give ourselves our own chiropractic adjustment of our thoughts? See, we have the opportunity to do that over and over again. And I want to invite you to know that your spiritual practice brings you to your adjustment. Like the more you're in practice, the more you're in this beautiful vibration that all of you are bringing to us, the more you're in whatever your practice is, you can adjust and adjust and adjust what is going on in your mind and what you are bringing to a room. But if you don't adjust it, it's going to start running a mind. Right? So just as we have the physical adjustments, where in our lives is that spiritual adjustment that we remember again and again and again who we are? What are you bringing to the party? Each and every one of us came into this life to deliver our gifts. We all came to deliver our gifts. Now, if we are having the perception that it's hard, we're going to have a hard time delivering them. When we're having any perception that something is difficult, then we're really struggling to deliver our gifts. Then it feels like it's too much labor to do it, correct? Yes. Now, how many women in here have given birth? Please show by raising hands. Now, thank you. When a woman gives birth, she goes into what? Labor. She goes into labor. And if she goes into, when she goes into labor, most women would say, was it kind of difficult at times? <laughs> That's a resounding yes. There was challenges in it. And let me ask you this, was it worth it? Yeah. Everyone will say it may have been really hard, but it was worth it. They were delivering their gifts. They were bringing forth love. They were bringing forth beauty. So the journey was worth it because it was temporary and it was a shift of perception of, is this worth it to give birth? I haven't met a woman once who just said, you know what, that was just way too hard. I should not have done that. What was I thinking? Most of them do it again and again and again. I was just with the family on the East Coast that there was, she was one of 13. I was like, ooh, that woman was strong. She's a strong woman. And when we have a shift in our perception that if we come to deliver our gifts, our gifts of just whatever it is for each and every one of you, when you bring forth the opportunity to know I'm delivering my gifts no matter what the challenges may come, Spirit has given you all you need to deliver them, otherwise they wouldn't have been birthed within you. Please catch that. They would not have been birthed within you if you didn't have everything you need to deliver your gifts. That's why they call it labor and delivery. You may have to labor through it for a moment, but this labor is the opportunity to know I have a practice to give me through it. If you live an intentional life of prayer, meditation, and conscious awareness, then labor is a piece of cake. Because then you're taking the conscious truth of, wait a minute, I'm activating spirit within me to know that I'm here to deliver my gifts, and no matter how hard it may seem, it's worth it. The world needs your gifts to be delivered. And no matter where you're at in life right now, I'm inviting you to just have a shift of perception to know the vision that spirit is bringing you must be birthed through you. So that you can just turn your head in one area and think, wait a second, wait, 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 how am I looking at this? Is this someone who's challenging in my life or is this an opportunity for me to grow? Is this a difficult situation before me that cannot be anything I can move through or do I have to grow more to get through it? You may have to grow. And I'm going to ask you to be more interested in that. What must grow in me? I had a client look at me yesterday and he said, why did you just say, well, so what are you talking about when you tell me I have to have my growing edge? 
What are you just, and I said, something has to grow in you to get to the other side. We are evolving beings, and in the evolution of our souls, if we don't rise up each day and think something must be released today to create space for me to remember who I am and to grow through this challenge to get to the other side. Each and every opportunity is just this place to go, wait, what am I perceiving? Everyone take a huge deep breath. I want you to think of anywhere in your life right now that seems difficult, difficult challenge that you have before you. And then I want you to ask simultaneously if you shift your perception and have an adjustment within what must grow within you to get through that challenge. What quality must be birthed, labor and delivery, for you to get through that challenge? Somebody holler it out. What's the quality? Love, compassion, trust. What would you say? Compassion. What else? Patience. Patience. Woo, who needs patience? Patience is a good one. Patience, the beautiful thing about patience is all you have to do is just ground your feet into the earth, take a massive deep breath, and don't say a word. Patience, don't say a word. Tap into that universal field of God and ask, what am I to know now before you speak the word? Patience is just asking us to be still. Be still and listen before words come out of your mouth. Because when you do, what's going to come out is the essence of love. When you walk into that place called work, whether it's your office, whether it's a huge company, I invite you to walk in and instead of looking for the love when you come in the door, instead of looking for, wait, what is going to be for me today? Who's going to help me today? Walk in and bring so much love that you literally illuminate the building by your sheer presence. And you will not have to say a word. But you bring in the love and watch everything transform before you. Love meets love. It's going to meet you in your consciousness. You will match what you are called to be. So when you walk in as love and are radiating so much of it, everything has to meet you right there so that your shift of perception is simply an awareness of, there's more love in this room that I was seeing before I brought it in with me. Because if you walk in with lack, Guess what the universal law brings back to you? Yes. It's our universal principle. We were taught this. We know it. If you're in this room, you know this. And I'm simply here to remind you to live it, whether it's in relationship, whether it's in work, wherever it is at, remember you have the opportunity to just move through it and know right here, right now, I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm choosing to grow with every song, every word, every situation is an opportunity to just sprout up and get bigger in it. When we love what we are being, there is no labor to it. There is nothing to do except be. My wonderful dad is in his 70s, retired years ago, and he, I think, lasted less than a year in retirement. Before all of a sudden, he called me and said, so hey, the, the local market came to me and asked me if I could start putting together a produce and do everything at work. And I go, Dad, that'd be great. You're really good at that. Like, he loves, he's an amazing chef. He loves produce. He used to run huge markets. Three years out now since that day, my father is training everyone in the produce department of every market how to have the most beautiful produce you've ever seen. And I get pictures via text constantly of like, honey, look at how good the produce looks here. And you look at how good it looks over here. It looks so beautiful because he is taking a stand for love. He's delivering his gifts, even if he's waking up at four in the morning last night. He said, well, I gotta get up at four, be in the market at five. I'll see you at dinner at five o'clock at your house. But maybe you can rest, Dad. Maybe you can rest. He doesn't want to rest. <laughs> He loves his love that is putting every vegetable, every fruit into what looks stunning. I know, I am very aware of that every person that grabs that piece of fruit, goes home and eats it, is being blessed by his love that he put into it as he put it down there. Because that's how connected we are. That's why when you came in this room and knew, I'm going to know the truth for you, and I'm going to know the truth for you, you are giving your love just as he is. So his gifts are being delivered. Is it worth the labor that he puts into it? I'll bet you anything he'd say yes, absolutely. Because he came to deliver his gifts. And he's not going to leave without every single one of them being delivered in the most beautiful way, articulate and perfect as he can. And every single one of us in here and beyond who's ever listening 
has that opportunity to deliver from the core of how you came in as a light being filled with so much love that you have to deliver it. You can't leave here with a still presence and not have been given out because the more you give, the more it's coming back to you. So I just invite you this day and onward that when you are in the place of what looks like work, it's not work. It's love showing up as you over and over and over again and continue to just stand in it, shine, take a breath, and here's how you have it, an adjustment. Remember when I said don't say a word and ground your heels into the earth? For patience? Anywhere, at any time, take a breath wherever you're at. You interrupt the patterning of the past. Take a breath and choose again and choose love as you deliver it outward so that you interrupt any sense of this isn't working, I don't know why I'm here, what was that person thinking? You become masterful at interrupting it, bringing love into the essence, and so that your gift is being delivered with ease and grace and joy. Can we say yes to that? Yes. Yes, everywhere, at every moment. Just, that's why I'm so grateful for the four of you. You just delivered your gifts to us. Was every one of us were touched by the gifts that were just delivered this morning, yes? yes? That's the exchange in life. Every one of you, wherever you're at at any given moment, when you give you, you're giving this. There's no mistake where you're at right now. And if you look like it's time that you want to move on to some different place of work, then bring so much love into the one you're at right this moment that you call forth the one that you wish. Because it has to come to you. It's a law. God did not bring you here without everything you need to absolutely go into labor and delivery. Now I'm asking, don't stop until you deliver every ounce of yourself and then more. Because Spirit's going to fill you right back up and give you even more to give again. I adore you all so much. I'm so happy to be here with each and every one of you. It's just the preciousness of life is so clear to me right now. It always is. It's something about so much occurring at one time. It's just that, that it, it gets it so it's so precious to be aware of. We have this beautiful existence. Beautiful existence, no matter how challenging it may seem at times. And I'm not negating the moments that it is hard and when we shift our awareness to, wait, can I just adjust the heart and bring in more love, bring in more love, bring in more love, the answer will always be revealed. So lead by love, please. Heal your heart by being present in the moment to know that you're right where you're supposed to be and keep growing. Just don't stop growing. Think of my father standing in the produce section going, honey, Look at my corn. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes a mean corn soup, too. All right, let me take you to prayer, please. Oh, everybody take a huge deep breath. I just want you to think about that space for yourself that has felt like work. Just hold it in your heart gently right now as I say these words of the prayer. Accepting and knowing that the one power, one presence is everywhere present, always is, always shall be. Divine presence God moves through each and every one of us with its such beauty and just passion and joy that we live in an all-needs-met world. Spiritual truth, all needs are met at all times. So I just rejoice for each and every individual in this room and those that are hearing these words that this moment and onward, there's just an awakening of our souls to see rightly, to interrupt any patterns of the past that have limitation attached to them, and to stand in the essence to deliver our gifts with love. To know that labor is worth it as we move through, that it's a temporary state to just simply ground into the earth to the unlimited power and shine more love to each and every situation. I bless our hearts. I bless our souls. I bless the gifts that are being delivered here, that they are so received upon the earth that the beings walking the earth shift to remember who they are. 
as they receive the love and give it back. How grateful I am for everyone here. I bless their hearts and their bodies and their minds. And I bless us all with divine health and wholeness and everyone in their families that are in need of prayer that we send them love now, knowing that they are feeling it, catching it. I bless Soul Center to know we continue to grow and evolve in a magnificent manner, bringing more love to this world by our yes. All needs met. Love is present. And we are grateful. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. 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 that I just want you to lean into the consciousness of givingness, of circulating, that we are a blessed community and that we absolutely are moving into that field that just as Marianne states in the law of circulation, there's more, there's always more to give and to receive. So we just bless the tithes and the givers and the receivers. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you so much, Auntie.